Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy and in today's video I'm going to be talking about my tight end start or sit decisions for every single matchup. Inside today's video we'll be going in depth into every single game at the tight end position starting with Thursday night football, the Bills at the Rams, and closing the video with Monday night football. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below while you're down there. Whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help us out a ton. And if you would like to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into this tight end start or sit decision video for week number one. We begin with the first matchup on the slate. Tonight's matchup, Thursday Night Football, the Buffalo Bills at the LA Rams. And I will be starting both of these tight ends in this game. Tyler Higby for the LA Rams is one of those players that I'm willing to start, but he is not a must-start candidate. If you waited late in drafts to take a tight end, then I think Higby is acceptable in this matchup because I do believe this is going to be a very high-scoring game and Tyler Higby barely leaves the field. So I think there's a good chance that Tyler Higby could end up scoring a touchdown in this game. He is far from a bad start, in my opinion, so I like Higby, but he is not necessarily a top 12 tight end in my rankings. For the Buffalo Bills, I love Dawson Knox here. His usage in the red zone is incredibly high, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if he scored a touchdown in this game. I've already bet him to score a touchdown in this game, so I expect it. Dawson Knox is a must-start tight end up against the LA Rams, and then Tyler Higby is a guy that you can play. Again, I'm not saying that he's a must-start tight end, but I do think that he's going to be pretty solid. Next up, we move to the New Orleans Saints at the Falcons to start the Sunday slate. For a start, I'm obviously going to be firing up Kyle Pitts. You drafted him inside of the top three rounds of your fantasy football drafts. I guess in some drafts, maybe he fell to the fourth, or in some drafts, people took him in the second, but in most drafts, he went in the third round. So obviously, you are going to be playing him on paper. This isn't the best matchup up against the New Orleans Saints, but I do think that the Falcons could keep things close. So I do like Kyle Pitts a ton in this matchup. And if they're down late in the game, they're going to have to throw the ball more and they don't have too many wide receivers. So Kyle Pitts usage in this offense should be incredibly high. For the Saints, they have Taysom Hill starting at tight end. Potentially, they also have Adam Troutman. Unless Taysom Hill is throwing the ball in the game, there is no reason to start Taysom Hill as your tight end. And then Adam Troutman, if they're both playing tight end, this is just a recipe for disaster. So sit both of them. Next up, we move to the Cleveland Browns at the Carolina Panthers. David Njoku is a decent player this week, but he doesn't crack my top 18 tight ends. Thus, he will be a sit for me this week. He is on the fringe of being a starter, though. Like, if you are down bad at tight end and you need a player to start, there are a million worse options than David Njoku, but I am just not in love with him in week number one. This matchup could be fine for Njoku, and Njoku could be the clear number two target on this team behind Amari Cooper. We will see what happens in week one. Again, if you need to start him, you can, but he's not an ideal start for me. And then for the Panthers, Tommy, make that ass tremble, will definitely be a sit for me. They don't really even have a clear number one tight end. It's not like Baker is someone who locks in heavily on the tight end position. To the 49ers at the Bears, and I had to go ahead and reshoot this part of the video because news just came out that it seems like George Kittle is trending towards not playing. Now, I honestly thought that George Kittle would be just fine, right? Maybe they're monitoring this groin injury, and he'll be just fine, right? That's my thought process, and now it seems like he might not play. Now, if he plays, I'm going to play him because he's just that good. Even if he's banged up, he'll be just fine, especially up against the Bears. But if he doesn't play, obviously you're going to have to sit him. Now, their backup tight end in the past might have been a start with Kittle out because Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Guap, Jimmy G-Spot loves to throw the ball to the tight end. But Trey Lance is now starting. So if Kittle is out, I'm going to go ahead and not play his backup. And I obviously am not going to play him if he is hurt. On the other side of the ball, Cole Komet is getting a lot of negativity put towards him this week. I still think Cole Komet's a fine start. They really don't have any fucking people to throw the goddamn ball to. They just have Cole Komet and my boy Darnell. Here comes the Mooney. They have two guys. So Komet's still going to get his, even if they are getting butt fucked in this game and the 49ers defense is stout. I just think Komet's going to get fed. So I'm still going to play him. But I'm starting to get incredibly nervous that George Kittle isn't going to play. Next up, we move to the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. And in this one, I like Pat Fryer Muth. Now, this offense is going to be extremely interesting in week one because I want to see what the hierarchy of targets is going to look like in this offense. I know Deontay Johnson 
is the guy. He's currently dealing with a shoulder injury, but Mike Tomlin already said after the preseason game that he got injured in that if this was a regular season game that he would have came back. So I'm not really worried at all about Deontay Johnson's availability in week one, but I will throw out Pat Fryermuth in this matchup. The Bengals defense isn't the best defense. They're not a dog shit defense, but I still think Pat Fryermuth could play good here in this spot. So I will start him. You definitely do need a touchdown out of him though, if he ends up being a valuable start. For the Bengals, Hayden Hurst is a guy that has made flashes in training camp. Hayden Hurst, in my opinion, is a pretty undervalued tight end in the National Football League, but there are so many mouths to feed in Cincinnati. There are so many fucking players that are going to need to get the football. They have Tee Higgins. They have Jamar Chase. They have Joe Mixon. They have Tyler Boyd. There are so many fucking players there that Hurst won't be seeing a crazy target share. I like Hurst in best ball, and I did like him in best ball drafts because you didn't have to actually figure out when to start him. If he finds pay dirt twice in a game, then bam, he goes into your lineup, he plays great. But it's going to be very hard week in and week out to project and figure out when you want to be starting Hayden Hurst. And up against the Steelers, which is a pretty tough matchup in my opinion, I would rather leave Hayden Hurst on my bench. Next up, we move to the Philadelphia Eagles at the Detroit Lions. And in this game, I love both tight ends. Now, I've seen a lot of shit on the internet about how, oh, don't you remember, Nick? Uh, the, the Eagles absolutely spit-roasted the Lions last year, don't you remember? Sure. But that has nothing to do with what is going to happen in week one in 2022. These are very different teams. Now, Dallas Goddard was a guy that Jalen Hurts had laser focus on last year laser focused on. I wouldn't have been surprised if Jalen Hurts underneath his shirt had a tattoo that said, I love Dallas Goddard because he was just forcing the ball to that man. But now they have a new guy there. His name's AJ Brown, one of the more talented wide receivers in the National Football League. So how does that affect Dallas Goddard's usage? I'm not sure. My best guess is that since Jalen Hurts liked Dallas Goddard, he's not just going to fade away and stop throwing him the ball. So I think Goddard could have a pretty solid game up against the Lions. I don't have him ranked in the top five, but it wouldn't surprise me if he finished as a top five tight end. And same thing goes with Detroit Lions tight end, TJ Hawkinson. When this guy is healthy, he is just so good. This matchup has all the makings to potentially be a very high scoring back and forth affair. So I like TJ Hawkinson here, even up against a tougher Eagles defense. Next up, we move to the Indianapolis Colts at the Houston Texans. And you guys know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, that I love my guy, Mo Money, Mo Cox, Mo Alley Cox. And maybe if Alec Pierce or Paris Campbell can't step up, then Mo Alley Cox might genuinely be someone who went undrafted in your fantasy drafts, a guy that you could pick up and reliably start every single week. Now, is that the scenario that I believe is going to unfold? No, because I really like Alec Pierce and I really like Paris Campbell. But is there a situation, a simulation in which that happens for the Colts? Of course. But for this game up against the Texans, even though the Colts are projected by Vegas to kind of roll up the Texans and smoke them like a blunt, I do expect this game to be relatively close. I just don't really like either of these tight ends, Mo Ali Cox or Brevin Jordan. I'm interesting to see how Brevin Jordan plays as well, because I think he's a pretty talented player. I just want to see what his role is in this offense this season. Next up, we move to the New England Deflatriots at my Miami Dolphins. Now, Hunter Henry is going to be a start for me in this game. Last year, going into fantasy football drafts, there were a lot of people that were very much in the boat of Janu Smith that believed that Janu Smith going from the Tennessee Titans, the late Titans, to the Patriots, that meant big things. That meant that he was going to be the number one tight end on this team in terms of targets, that he was going to play great. But if you watched any games last year, Janu Smith was doing his best fucking John Cena because you could not see him. He was not really out there at all trying to catch passes. Things weren't great for Janu Smith. He fucking sucked ass for fantasy football. But now in 2022, it's a new year. Could things change? Definitely. But right now, based upon what I saw last season, it wouldn't surprise me if Hunter Henry had a fantastic year. Yet again, he was dominant in the red zone for the team. He scored a shit ton of touchdowns. And up against the Miami Dolphins, it would not surprise me at all if he ended up scoring in this game. So I like Hunter Henry. Again, not a guy that I'm banging the drum for aggressively. A guy that I would tell you that you have to start. But if you got him, there is far worse tight ends than Hunter Henry. Mike Licky on my Gesicki on. Mike Gesicki. In terms of of tight ends in the National Football League, this guy on paper, in terms of pure pass-catching ability, 
might be up there with one of the best tight ends in the league. The issue is in this Miami Dolphins system, head coach Mike McDaniel wants the team to have a tight end that can block. Mike Gesicki has proven that he's not great at blocking. Now, can that change? And can Mike Gesicki transform himself into a good blocker, a proficient blocker? Yes. Yes, it could. But with so many players on the Dolphins, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Cedric Wilson, Chase Edmonds, Mostert, who can catch passes, will Gesicki fade away? Potentially. So in week one, I would rather just bench Gesicki and play him for one of the other guys that's a start in this video that you may even be able to find off the waiver wire and just wait and see, right? Gesicki could go crazy in week one and maybe all this talk about Gesicki sucking at blocking is completely off. That would be great. That would be great. But there's also a scenario where you start him, he's not playing much, the other tight ends are rotating in and Gesicki struggles immensely. So I'm going to sit Gasicki down on the bench this week as well as Janu Smith. Next up, we move to the Baltimore Ravens at the New York Jumbo Jets. The Ravens here are going to go absolutely apeshit up against the Jets. I think Mark Andrews is going to go balls deep into the defense. Isaiah Likely is a guy that has been talked up recently. They're talking about Isaiah Likely being the number three target on this team. So Andrews would be either number one or number two. Bateman, either number one or number two. And then Likely will be number three ahead of guys like Devin Duvernay and James Prochet. Now, if that does end up being true, and we see that Isaiah Likely is out there all the time, they're running two tight end sets, then maybe Isaiah Likely is an interesting pickup and an interesting start going forward. But in week number one, I understand, Nick, this is an easy matchup against the Jets. I agree. It is a easy matchup. But do I want a chance, Isaiah Likely, the second string tight end on the Ravens in week one, just because of the matchup, just because of all this hype? No. Can he be a starter in your fantasy football roster a couple of weeks from now? Definitely. In week one, I'm sitting him on the bench and I love Mark Andrews. As I said, the Jets actually have a problem. They have too many good tight ends. They have Uzama as well as Tyler Conklin, and I think both of them can play. I think both of them are actually pretty good. The problem is that Joe Flacco is the starting quarterback, so I don't want anything to do with either of them. Next up, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Washington Commanders, and here we're sitting everyone. Logan Thomas could play in this game. He could not play in this game. If he does end up playing, then I think Logan Thomas has some sneaky upside, but he is coming off of an injury and hasn't really practiced all offseason during training camp. So do I want to roll him out there when he's kind of maybe stiff potentially or maybe just not 100%? No. If he doesn't play, then John Master Bates, <laughs> funny, is going to play. John Bates, come on, like you're not going to start him. Evan Ingram is one of the saddest NFL players I've ever seen because the guy takes his shirt off. He looks fantastic. Pause. Evan Ingram has all of the ability. Once he catches the football, he looks amazing. The issue with Evan Ingram and being a tight end in the NFL, the issue with that is he needs to catch the ball and he cannot fucking do it. Now, I know some people will be like, Nick, this was just an issue in New York with the Giants. Nick, this issue is going to be gone in Jacksonville. There were so many reports out of training camp where, oh, Lawrence is playing good, but there was three drops. Three of the drops went to Evan Ingram. How the fuck does he drop the ball so much? How? If he could catch the ball, he'd be really good. I think this is even a matchup that he could exploit. The problem is, the guy can't catch the fucking football, so he's going to be sitting on my bench, and he should be on your waiver wire. Next up, speaking of the Giants, we got the Giants, the New York football Giants at the Les Titans. But before we break this game down, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor over at Drafters. They've been on your screen this entire video. Now, I know football kicks off in a couple of hours, but there's still time to hop in some more best ball contests. Are you looking for some soft best ball contests? Look no further than our partnership with Drafters Fantasy Sports. If you deposit $100 using promo code STOCHASTIC, which is on your screen right now, S-T-O-K-A-S-T-I-C, you will receive a $100 First match deposit bonus, you deposit $100, they will give you an additional $100. And the best part about drafters is that their biggest contest, $1 million prize pool, 
$250,000 to first is going to have overlay. It is not going to fill, which makes it significantly easier to win. So make sure that you get in before it's too late because it locks tonight prior to kickoff. They also offer weekly contests as well during the regular season. So you can do some regular season drafts on there as well. So make sure you guys do use promo code Stochastic. You will also receive our best ball draft kit for 100% free. Make sure you click on that link down below in the video description. Let's get back on into things. So in this game, Daniel Bellinger is the perceived number one tight end on this team. They had Ricky Seals-Jones, who I kind of talked myself into in the offseason. Then he gets hurt. He gets cut. Sad day for him. Sad shit. But now Bellinger is the starter. Rookie. In his first game against the Titans defense. He's going to sit him. Maybe he does have use later on in the season, but not this week. For the Titans, I like Austin Hooper. I think Austin Hooper is also pretty underrated. Austin Hooper was, has been in a pretty bad situation for the last couple of years, but now he's in Tennessee as the clear numero uno, the clear number one tight end, and I think in the red zone, his usage is going to be incredible. So I like him here up against the Giants again. Not like a must-start guy, but one of the guys where... If you didn't get one of those elite tight ends and you need a spot start this week, I'd be fine with Austin Hooper. Next up, we move to the Kansas City Chiefs at the Arizona Cardinals. And shocker, you're going to start Travis fucking Kelsey. You drafted him in the first or second round. Travis Kelsey has been fantastic year in and year out. We know there's a lot of question marks at wide receiver. Is MVS going to be the number one receiver? Is it going to be Sky with two wise more? Could it be me, Cole Hardman? Could it be the TikTok King Juju Smith-Schuster? We already know who the number one target is going to be. It's going to be Travis Kelsey. So Kelsey up against the Cardinals defense in what should be a very high scoring matchup. I like Kelsey. Cardinals tight end Zach Ertz is banged up. If he doesn't play, I'm not going to play Trey McBride. I think that's a little bit crazy. But if he doesn't play, then obviously you want to send him down. My best guess, just like my guess about George Kittle, is that Zach Ertz plays. I think Zach Ertz is going to be good to go. But again, I'm not a doctor. Next up, we move to the, turn your volume down, the Las Vegas Raiders at the Los Angeles Chargers. Another great tight end game. Darren Waller dealing with all of these injury contract negotiation. I don't fucking know what was happening, but what I do know is going to happen is Waller's going to play up against the Raiders, or, or up against the Raiders. He's on the fucking Raiders, going to play up against the Chargers, and he's going to play well. Darren Waller is a viable player in this offense. He's a vital player to this team. Up against the Chargers, again, high-scoring game script. I like Waller. Gerald Everett, he's a shot in the dark. He's a shot in the dark because Everett has never really had this role. He's never really been the number one tight end. But if this is a back-and-forth high-scoring game, and we know Justin Herbert, the pervert, likes to throw to tight ends, I want to get a piece of that with Gerald Everett. Next up, we move to the Green Bay Packers at the Minnesota Vikings. Irv Smith seems to be good to go. He was dealing with that thumb injury. He's good to go now up against the Packers. I like Robert Tunyon, but Tunyon is coming off a pretty serious injury, and I haven't seen any reports saying that he's 100% good to go yet. I think he could play here, and if he scores, then he'll be worth it, but I'd rather just sit him down for now. I liked picking him up. I think there are a lot worse options than Tanyan here, but am I really going to be ecstatic to play him this week? No, whereas I think Irv Smith might be able to find pay dirt in this game. This is also another one of those matchups that I really like on paper. I think this could be a high-scoring game, and we'll see, right? We already know Justin Jefferson's role. We know Adam Thielen's role. Now, who is truly going to benefit from this being a more pass-heavy offense? Is it going to be KJ Osborne, the third receiver? on the Vikings behind Justin Jefferson and behind Adam Thielen? Or is it going to be Irv Smith? I was a guy that was banging the drum aggressively for Irv Smith last year. I really liked him. Then he got hurt. It is what it is, right? You win some, you lose some. But this year healthy, maybe we see Irv Smith season. Because I think he's a pretty talented player. And when Kyle Rudolph was banged up in the past, Irv Smith looked really, really good. Next up, we move to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Dallas Cowboys for Football. Very interesting matchup. I think the Bucs are going to win, but I know the Cowboys are kind of down bad at wide receiver because they don't have Gallup. Without Gallup, they could really look to heavily pepper Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz was incredible last year. He was a vital part in the red zone scheme for this team. 
So up against the Bucks, while I think the Bucks defense is exquisite, really good. Dalton Schultz, I think, could still get it done from a volume perspective. For the Bucks, they've got Brayton, they got Rudolph, and they got no Gronk. This seems like a tight end by committee. This seems like you're going to see Brayton. Then they sub Brayton out. You see Rudolph. Sub Rudolph in, out. You see Brayton. And it's like a 50 50 split. And you want to blow your fucking brains out trying to figure out which one to start. Now, maybe in week one, it's clear it's Brayton. Or it's clear it's Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer. But going into the game, why chance it? Why risk it, right? You're not playing. Unless you're playing like a fucking 24-team league, which no one in their sane mind is doing. There's no need to play Rudolph or Brayt this week up against the Dallas Cowboys. Again, maybe things get ironed out. Maybe we know a couple weeks from now. Whoa, hey now, Cameron Brayt's the guy, or whoa, Rudolph's the guy. If I'm being honest with you, I think in the red zone, the guy that's getting the targets, the the tight end, the pseudo-tight end on the team, it's Julio. My boy Julio Jones. So let's see. Final game here, the Broncos at the Seahawks. By the end of the season, by the end of the season, I'm going to learn how to say this guy's name correctly. Albert Aquabonum. Alberto, tight end of the Denver Broncos. Greg Dolchich seemed like he was going to sneak up from behind, fucking stab this guy in the back, and steal Alberto's job. And he gets hurt. He's out for like a month. So it's Alberto time. This matchup up against Seattle, Jeff's kiss, man, you fweak. People have Alberto ranked as like a top eight tight end. I think that is absurd. I think that's absurd because there's so much that we don't know. But the matchup is so juicy that you got to play him. If you got him, and I'm going to be sitting down Noah Fant. This is a revenge game for Noah Fant. You guys know I love revenge game narratives. But Noah Fant with Geno Smith at quarterback? No. Now, if this was Drew Locke and Noah Fant, maybe I'd talk myself into it. Maybe I'd do some mental gymnastics. Be like, fuck it. Galaxy brain. Noah Fant. Horse cock Drew Locke. Let's do it. But that's not the scenario. It's Geno Smith. So, no offense. He's going to be a sit for me. So, thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you did end up enjoying, make sure you hit that like button as well as hitting that subscribe button down below. It would help us out a ton. And if you would like to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. So, I love you guys all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And I hope that you guys tune in to the Thursday night football stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time prior to kickoff, where I'm going to answer as many fucking questions as possible. There's probably going to be a million questions, so I'll try my best. If you have any other questions, leave them down below in the comment section. I try to get to all of them. I love you guys all so much. I really do hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, good boy!